welcome to this vMix demonstration. In this video, I'll be showing you an overview of some of the major features of vMix, including titles, chroma keying, virtual sets, instant replay, and live streaming. So let's get started. So here we are on the desktop of my Windows 8 laptop. You can use a laptop or PC running Windows 7 or Windows 8. After installing vMix, you'll see an icon on the desktop and optionally a 64-bit icon if you have the 64-bit version of Windows installed. This allows you to take advantage of more than 4 gigabytes of memory when using vMix. We'll double-click the vMix 64-bit icon to begin. The vMix interface resembles that of a traditional hardware switcher. To the left is the preview window here. This is where we can queue up what will be playing next. To the right is the output window. This is what the final output will look like when streamed to the web or recorded to disk. The transition buttons in the middle allow us to change between the preview window and the output window using a variety of different effects such as cut, fade or zoom. Along the bottom of the screen are your inputs. This is where you can add all of your sources including cameras and videos. I'm going to add a couple of video cameras by clicking Add Input. In the Add Input window, you can see all the different options I have to add to vMix, including video, image, DVD, capture, video delay, title, and so on. For this demonstration, I'm going to add two video cameras. To do this, I'm going to go to the Capture tab here. Before I add some cameras to vMix, I'll show you how I've got everything set up here for this demonstration. Over here I have an external Thunderbolt enclosure by Sonnet Technology. Inside I have a Viewcast Osprey capture card which contains four SDI inputs. I'm using two of those for this demonstration plugged into two cameras facing me. From the external enclosure I have a Thunderbolt cable that plugs into the Thunderbolt port on this laptop. In this case, I have a Lenovo S430, but there are quite a few Thunderbolt Windows laptops now available. So back to vMix, under my Capture tab, I have an option here called Capture. From here, we can see the four inputs available from my Viewcast card. So for this demonstration, I will select SDI-A. Here we can select a resolution, frame rate, input, for example, HDMI, SDI, component, and so on, and some other options including deinterlacing for interlaced sources and audio device. For the audio device, some capture cards include the audio built-in to the capture feed, in which case you can just select built-in audio. In the case of this Osprey capture card, the audio is available separately. So I can see from the drop-down box here that I have a variety of audio inputs to choose from. I will choose the first channel of SDI input A here. So here we have SDI A for the video and SDI A for the audio. So I think everything's ready now, so let's click OK. So now I have my first camera added to vMix. As you can see, this is a live feed coming from the camera in front of me. Now let's add the second camera. Go to Add Input again, we'll select the Capture tab, and then from the drop-down this time I'll choose SDI-B. And I will choose the audio, SDI Input B1 as well. Once everything looks OK, I'll click OK. And here we have now our two cameras, one to the left and to the right. And now we can begin to use these transition buttons. For example, a simple cut, or a fade, or even a wipe. Now, using these arrows here, I can select the duration of each of these effects. So we can see the fade is currently set to 1000 milliseconds, or one second, and we can see the wipe is set to 5000 milliseconds, or five seconds. Let's change the wipe to 1000 to make it a bit faster. And now when we click it, it's a one second transition. And we also have a whole lot of other transition options available. Slide, fade, zoom, wipe, fly, cross zoom, fly rotate, cube, 
and cube zoom. So let's choose cube zoom and let's select 2000. And let's transition back again. At the bottom we have a FTB or fade to black button. This will fade to black the recording or streaming outputs. So if we select that, you can see that I can still see the output here, so I can queue up and get everything ready, but the final output will be black until I click this again to fade to the main output. And we also have in the bottom here a T-bar, just like on a traditional hardware switcher. So I can fade and it will automatically switch the inputs after the fade has completed. I can also change the effect that the T-bar generates when fading from preview to output. The T-bar is assigned to the first transition here. So if I change from fade to fly, now when I operate the T-bar, I have a fly effect. So we'll change that back to fade for now. Next, I'll add a video clip to vMix. To do this, I'll click Add Input again and select the Video tab. Now from here, I can click Browse and browse for any supported video clip on my computer. For this demonstration, I'm going to load the clip burlybeach.avi, which I recorded earlier. Once I've selected that video clip, I can click OK. Now you would have noticed in the Add Input window that there are a couple of video files already listed. This list here will show all the recent files you have loaded into vMix. So you can go back in and simply load a video clip like that. As we've already added a video clip, I can close that video clip by clicking close. So now the video clip has been added to the list of inputs below. To select this video clip into the preview window, we simply click it once. From the preview window, I can use this bar to drag the position of the video anywhere that we like. I can also restart or begin playback. Now to transition this video clip to the output, I simply click fade. I can also use any of the other transitions, for example, the white we prepared earlier. You'll note the video clip automatically paused when I faded back out again. You can configure these settings by double clicking the input. As you can see here, I have a couple of options selected by default. For example, automatically play with transition and automatically pause after transition. I can also automatically restart with transition. So let's select that and see what happens. So now we have this video clip. It has been selected to 11 seconds and let's begin fading. As you can see, the video clip has restarted automatically. And if I fade back, the video clip is restarted and ready to go for next time. We can also loop this video clip by clicking the loop button below. So now when the video clip reaches the end, it will automatically loop to the beginning again. Okay, now let's add a title. We'll select Add Input and select the Title tab. There are quite a few templates built in already, and you can also purchase additional title packs via our website. For this demonstration, I will select this News HD title and click OK. So now you notice that when I've opened the title window, the title editor appears. This is where I can change the text in my title. So for the headline, I will change this to vMix demonstration and description. Now I can close this title editor window and you can see the title here. vMix demonstration, this is a title. I have edited the text. To edit the text again, simply right click and go to the title editor. Text updates within the title editor are live. So any change I type in here will instantly appear in the preview. To use this title, I'll now show you the overlays feature of vMix. Underneath each input are the numbers 1, 2, 3 and 4. These represent the four overlay channels. So if I click one, the title will fade over the top of the output. And if I select the button again, 
I'll fade out. Now we can also change the transition effect for this overlay. To do this, we select the overlay button below. Here you can see the numbers 1, 2, 3 and 4, as well as an effect. So we'll change the fade to slide and click OK. So now when I select the button, the title slides in and it slides out. We can also use the overlay to create a picture-in-picture -picture effect. To do this, we'll select the overlay and this time select the number 2 channel. Here I can select a type and I'm going to change it to picture-in-picture. -picture. Here I can adjust the position, so let's put it up the top and over here and select OK. Now to bring up the second camera as a picture in picture, we simply click the two button. And there is the video camera there. Vmix also includes a built-in audio mixer. We can access this by clicking the speaker icon below. As we can see, all the audio sources available, including our two cameras, will appear in the audio mixer. There's also a mute and unmute button and an automatic audio mixing button. Automatic audio mixing will automatically fade in and fade out the audio source alongside the video. If you'd like an audio source to play back throughout the entire production, simply deselect the button and the audio source will now keep playing regardless of what is currently in the output. So now let's add a virtual set. Once again, we select add input and go to the virtual set tab. Here we have four virtual sets built in. There are also additional virtual sets available for download via our website. For this demonstration, we'll select the News Studio set. Once the virtual set has been added, we can click the Setup tab to begin setting up our scene. Here we have a list of layers available in each virtual set. Background, Screen, Frame, Talent and Foreground. So to change the talent, simply select Talent and we can select an input. So I'll select the first camera. As you can see here, now the camera has appeared in the middle of the virtual set. Now we need to chroma key the background of our video camera. To do this, simply double click the camera and go to the color key tab. Here, we use the eyedropper to select the background and then select auto chroma key. Depending on your green screen and lighting, you may need to tweak these settings to achieve the best performance. So I'll move that to there, and this here. We can also select anti-aliasing. So back to our virtual set, we can now see the background has disappeared. Let's zoom in to the virtual set to get a clearer picture. To do this, we go to the camera tab and we can select one of the camera angles. Let's choose the close up. You can adjust the speed of this zoom by choosing one of these options, fast, medium, slow, and cut. You can also select a custom duration using the box here. We can also adjust the position of each layer by going to the setup tab, selecting the layer and simply dragging the main input window. So here I can move it around and that looks about right. As you can see there is a part of the camera angle that isn't covered by the green screen. We can crop this out by double clicking the camera and go to the position tab to select some of the cropping options. So let's crop to there. Let's select our studio again. So as you can see on the virtual set, the background is now completely removed. We can go to the camera tab and zoom out. Or select cut and select any camera angle. We can also add a second input to the background of this virtual set. We can go to the setup tab and select the screen layer and I'll select my video clip for this demonstration. 
Now you can see the video clip is playing in the background and if I click play here it will begin playing behind me. Now I'll show you how to use the video delay feature. This is also known as instant replay. To do this we select add input again and go to the video delay tab. Here we can select the output or any video camera you currently have in vMix. We can also select a resolution, a video codec and the number of seconds we want this delay to run for. So for this demonstration I'll select the camera A and 10 seconds and click OK. Now we have a video delay of our first camera. As you can see by default it is set to live but if I select the video delay into the preview I can drag the slider and create a delay. So if I wave my hand around five seconds later we can see my hand waving in this video delay. We can also stop recording to create a snapshot in time. So here you can go and see my hand waving and I can queue up that and fade to it like so and then fade out again. To play back in slow motion I can use the speed slider to the right. Now if we click play, slow motion playback. To save my production setup I can click save preset. Let's call this demonstration. So if I close vMix and open it again I can open up that preset to bring us back to where we were before. So now that my live production is ready to go I can begin streaming to the web. To do this open the streaming window. Here we need to put in a URL and a stream key. For this demonstration I'll be streaming to Ustream. So here I've already logged into my Ustream account. Simply go to the channels button and select the remote menu. Here Ustream will provide me with an RTMP URL and a stream key. So I will copy the RTMP URL and paste that into my streaming settings window. I'll also need to copy the stream key and paste that in the window as well. We can also select an encode size, a frame rate and a data rate depending on how much bandwidth we have with our internet provider. For this demonstration I've just kept it as small as possible, 320 by 180, 332, but you can specify an encode size all the way up to full HD if you have the internet speeds available. So now we're ready to go. Simply click start and within a few seconds we'll be live on the web. So here we are, streaming is running, we can close the streaming window. The streaming button will appear green when the stream is running. To see that everything is working I can now go back to my Ustream page and click go to channel. So here is our virtual set live and streaming to the web. You can download a full 60 day trial by visiting vmixhd.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.